Hey, Jake with BH, and today we're talking about 10 tips for Adobe Premiere CC to help you edit faster and get more work. So let's get to it. Number one, the first thing I want to stress is organizing your footage in separate bins. For example, here I have a couple of bins that labeled A as A roll. That way you know that's where your A roll is. You label your folder B as B roll. That way each bin you know what's in there. So if you had to go back and look for an A roll clip, you could even go in there and label takes if you wanted to. Always separate your bins and label them accordingly. This is even better if you're handing off and edit to somebody else. They know exactly where everything is. Number two is quick copy. Holding down the Option key and dragging will make an instant copy of an item on your timeline. This works for pretty much anything on your timeline. Audio, video clip, music track, graphic that you made. It's just a quick way to copy something that you want to move around the timeline. Number three, making adjustment points on audio without using the pen tool. Now, I actually don't ever use the pen tool, but uh, Matt apparently does. So instead of using the pen tool to drop points on your audio for volume adjustments, you can hold the command key and click to add points onto the audio layer. Now you can make your adjustments without having to select the pen tool, just one less step in the process of saving you time while you edit. Number four, ripple delete. A ripple delete is faster than using a traditional delete. After you make the desired cut to your edit, press shift forward delete key to make a ripple delete. For those on MacBook, you'll need to press function shift delete. For PC, it's just shift delete. And all the footage to the right is automatically shifted to the left to fill in the space of where the cut was made. This is faster than using a more traditional delete, where I would then have to use the quick select tool, select all the footage ahead, and move it back into place to fill in the empty space. I love Ripple Delete. I swear by Ripple Delete. So many times I've had such a cluster of sequences that I, I, you know, and I have to cut something out here just to make it flow better. And I just cut that out, hit Ripple Delete, boom, moves over. I'm moving on. Number five, changing the keyboard shortcuts. The good thing is if the keyboard shortcut from the previous example was too cumbersome, you can change it and other shortcuts to your taste in the keyboard shortcuts menu. On Mac, head to the Premiere menu, keyboard shortcuts. PC, you head to the Edit menu, keyboard shortcuts. From there, find the tool or shortcut sequence you want to change by typing it into the search box or scrolling through the list of commands. Double click the shortcut and press your desired keyboard command in place of it. Make sure to save the keyboard preset so it always loads up the next time you edit. Number six, track select tool. If there's a point in your edit where you must select everything from a certain point forward or back, the track select forward and track select backward tools help you out there. Press the A key on your keyboard and select the section of clips you want to move in mass. If you want to select specific tracks in your edit to the left, use the Track Select Backwards tool, which is Shift A key. You can also select a single track of content on your timeline by holding the Shift key. Notice the arrow changes from a pair to a single arrow. The Track Select tool is useful if you need to move part of your edit forward because you decide to extend a section, for example, or you decide to place in additional footage. Number seven, locking layers. In this example, I need to move some footage forward here with the Track Select tool, but I don't want to move the music layer. If you use the lock icon here on the music layer, it will prevent it from being selected, moved, or altered. So this kind of ties back to selecting tracks. If you wanted to move a whole bunch of footage on your sequence, but you didn't want to move the music, you want to keep it where it was, you lock the music track and you're able to move everything else around it. The music stays exactly where it was, saving you time once again. Number eight, spanned markers. Spanning the markers helps you take notes on the timeline. First, add a marker with the M key. If you cannot press the M key to add a marker, head to the keyboard shortcuts menu and add it in. Once you've made your marker by pressing the M key, head to the timeline and option or alt on windows, click the marker to turn it into a span marker. Click one side of the marker to extend it outwards to the desired length. Then double click it to rename to what note you need. You can double click the span marker on the timeline to read any notes left inside that marker. This is a great way to label your footage on the timeline. I cannot say when I learned about this shortcut, this is really a helpful way to, to manage your long interview. Say for instance you're doing a really long interview and there's different topics that they're talking about you know, and there's no way to really label them without these markers spanning them across. You know exactly what the topic is, maybe even a quote that's in that particular sequence within those two markers. Super helpful way to manage your interview edit. Number nine, master clip effects. Say you finished working on your edit and you are now picture locked, ready to color correct your video for example. Typically, you might edit one of your clip segments on your timeline and then copy and paste those color corrections individually. That tends to take a lot of time and sometimes you might miss a clip segment that you were supposed to copy and paste those attributes to. I've done it. If you click your clip on the timeline and instead the effects control, see this master clip panel next to it? 
If you click this, you're now able to globally affect the entire clip as a whole, instead of working in pieces. If you need to make changes to the correction, just head back to your master clip and make your corrections. This saves time instead of individually copying and pasting effects amongst the whole timeline. And you'll see the master clip has been affected because you see that little red line under the FX on your clip. This is especially useful if you're working on a long, complicated edit with many moving parts on a timeline. Number 10, actually this is my favorite. Have you ever realized that you wanted to see if a clip on your timeline has a better take? In this example, let's see if there is a better take in the same clip we could use. Usually you might right click on the timeline and click reveal in project. Others might rummage in the file bin to find the file in question. What if I said there's an easier way to get that clip while bringing it into your preview monitor for review? Click the clip on your timeline you want to look at and press the F key to bring the original clip into your source monitor just like that. There, you'll see the exact in and out markers you made last time. You can now scrub through to find something new from this clip. Set your in and out points and drag it onto your timeline. Now you are saving time. No right clicking, no looking for footage in your bins, and saving time means you get your job done faster. What are some of your favorite tips in Adobe Premiere CC? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to see more videos like this and click that notification bell to be the first to know when a new video comes out. I'm Jake with B&H, just keep editing.